It has just gone 20 past seven in the morning here in Paris. Just about time, I think, to have a look through the papers with Flo. Hi there. Hi, Gat. We're going to start off uh, with the Greek debt crisis. More twists and turns, still a very big story. It's still a huge story here in France. Of course, yesterday, the Greek prime minister managed to buy a little bit of time at that emergency uh, meeting in Brussels. Le Figaro, the conservative paper, is not a big fan of uh, Alexis Tsipras, it must be said. This is their take on what he's doing. Alexis Tsipras is playing with Europe's nerves. Now, in its editorial, uh, Le Figaro is critical of the French president, François Hollande, and the German chancellor, Angela Merkel. Instead of putting an end to this fool's game, that's what Le Figaro calls it, they've given Alexis Tsipras an extension. Now, meanwhile, according to Le Figaro, it's rather strange that Alexis Tsipras is buying time when his house, Greece, is on fire. Maybe a Grexit is what he wanted all along. That's what Le Figaro is wondering. And if that's the case, well, he should have said something a little earlier. Well, that isn't what he's been saying, is it? He has said, I don't want to leave the Eurozone, don't want to leave Europe. Uh, so from scornful words in Le Figaro to praise in L'Humanité. L'Humanité, of course, is the communist uh, paper here in France. They've always been a big fan of Alexis Tsipras. Now, today, uh, Tsipras is heading to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, and L'Humanité really applauds Tsipras, uh, who's, they say he's starting to act more and more like a leader, and he's being more and more taken seriously, and they really like the fact that he's taking a political angle on, on, this, on all this. He's playing the political card, and he's not playing the technocratic card like the rest of Europe is playing. Okay, uh, French paper is also focusing on uh, a, how a Frenchman is doing in all of this, our very own French president, François Hollande. That's right. Let's go back to Le Figaro. They have a very interesting poll today. They say, here you can see it, uh, during the Greek crisis, a majority of French people have more trust in the German chancellor, Angela Merkel, than they do in their own president. If we take a closer look at the figures, you can see just what this poll says, mm -hmm. that basically... The answer to the question, who do you trust more to get out of the current Greek crisis? Well, French people say 44% of them trust Angela Merkel, 24% of them trust François Hollande, and 23% of them trust Alexis Tsipras. Now, it's no surprise that Germans have a lot of confidence in Angela Merkel. You can see her there, 51%, 31% uh, for Hollande and only 6% for Tsipras. Le Parisien takes a look at what Greeks think about uh, François Hollande. Uh, they think he's really taking the back seat in all this. You can see a quote there uh, that's from 45-year-old Stamakis. He says, Hollande is letting himself be jerked around by Merkel instead of defending us. Well, she's the one with the good economic track record, isn't she? <laughs> that's right. Well, they, he says, we were expecting more from France. We were expecting more from a socialist president. OK, well, another question in the French papers is uh, what consequences this Greek crisis will have elsewhere in Europe? I think every single European country asking that. Absolutely. Now, L'Opinion, the pro-business paper, is really taking a look at this today and says the worst could be yet to come in Europe. Events in Greek are a godsend for Eurosceptic parties. Uh, and essentially, they could really, this whole crisis could really change the political landscape. Uh, across Europe, you can see here it's talking about l'épidémie anti-européenne, the anti European epidemic. And in another article, L'Opinion focuses on three elections that are scheduled in Europe for the end of the year. So that's going to take place uh, in Portugal, Poland and Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, events in Greece could actually push people to vote for populist anti-European parties on the left, but also on the right. So you can see here Lisbon, Warsaw and Madrid fear some sort of a political backlash from this Greek soap opera. OK, well, let's move away from events uh, in and around Greece, uh, back here in France. It was a big day yesterday for a whole bunch of teenagers, <laughs> that famous baccalauréat, the results coming out. That's right. I saw a lot of uh, kids celebrating in the streets uh, yesterday. Uh, Le Figaro focuses on the results of the baccalaureate that came out yesterday. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. 81.6% of French students managed to pass their baccalaureate. And we have to say, I think for people who don't know it, this is an absolutely vital qualification. Absolutely. In France. Lots of different types. You can be scientific or philosophical. Or sort of literary, uh, uh, economic. And if you, you don't have it, then it really, really messes tough. up your chances, doesn't exactly. it, later on. And uh, it's, it's seen as being, well, traditionally, quite a hard exam. Mm. But Le Figaro wonders, is it actually becoming easier and easier to pass oh, your baccalaureate? They say that every year. They say it every year, but it's true that statistically more and more people are passing Maybe they're getting their cleverer. Well, Le Figaro <laughs> actually blames the fact that examiners were actually given instructions to be lenient Ooh. on certain things like spelling, etc. So Le Figaro says the exam is losing its credibility. But what's <laughs> interesting is, according to La Croix, the Christian paper, the same goes for uh, the distinctions, les mentions. Uh -huh. uh, in the last quarter century, the number of mentions très bien, so that's the equivalent of a, 
I guess, a first class distinction in the UK mm -hmm. or magna cum laude, laude in uh, the US. Well, the number of mention très bien has been multiplied by 10 in the last 25 years. So uh, La Croix wonders, do these mentions, do these distinctions, do they have any value today? Well, they do actually, because they really do make it a lot easier to get into the school you wanted to get into. Maybe they'll have to come up with très, très bien or something like that. <laughs> Finally, very quick word about hygiene in restaurants here in Paris. That's right. Well, now I could say can... some words about that. <laughs> exactly. Well, you can now check the hygiene of certain restaurants in Paris online. Fantastic. Now, this is an experiment put in place by the Ministry of Agriculture. 800 bars and restaurants. Uh, you can see here there's an interactive map. You can click on each arrondissement district of Paris, check it out. Uh, and the same goes for Avignon. So if you're there for the festival, the theater festival, you can take a sneak peek at the hygiene you're going to be checking out in those restaurants. Very helpful, because delicious food, but hygiene is important too. <laughs> Thanks very much, Flo Vermino. He'll be back later on looking through the international papers for us as well. Stay with us here on Live from Paris, a short break now. When we're back, we'll have all the latest world news updates for you, plus our special focus report. Forget phone calls and faxes. Twitter is the new way to cut through red tape, apparently. That's according to one Spanish village, at least. We are reporting from Andalusia on an unlikely digital revolution. Stay with us. <laughs>